Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Tuesday, August 15th, 2023 meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works, and I'm also the Chair of the Commission. Uh, Beth, when you are ready, please call the roll. Here. Cody? Here. Jamie? Devin? Here. Diana? Nancy? Here. Karen? Here. Jamila? Here. Carolyn? Adam, that's it. We do okay. have a quorum of six. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Beth. And again, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, so uh, we typically start the meeting with public comment. I see that there are a lot of folks gathered here. What I would ask is that if you are here to speak to an item that is on our agenda, that you hold your comment until we reach that item on the agenda. Um, and then as, as part of our process, um, I will open up the floor for comments. Um, so if you are here to speak to us about something that is not on our agenda, this afternoon and you would like to address the commission, this is your opportunity to do so. I ask that you raise your uh, virtual hands. Um, we have a lot of uh, folks with us. So I ask that um, you keep your comments to two minutes. Um, and again, this is for those who have uh, comments that are not related to anything that is on our agenda this afternoon. So, so I see three hands and we will take them in order. Um, we'll unmute you. I just need your name and city of town of residence, please. Let's start with Benjamin Spencer. Uh, hello, um, hi everybody. I'm Benjamin Spencer. I live in Northampton on Rust Avenue, and um, uh, mostly I'm just um, here because I'm interested in expressing my support for the downtown redesign. And um, I've been sort of seeing a lot of feedback in the paper as of late and um, and talking to some folks. And I just really want to make sure that um, that uh, that what's what's happening, sorry, uh, what's happening, what the plan is and all is, um, I think it's just is really exciting. And I think it's going to be a, a really great opportunity um, to make downtown um, just a, a much more user-friendly space for everybody. So mostly I'm just here to sort of speak in favor of, of this project and to really encourage as much as possible that the city sort of proactively gets out like good information. I, one thing I've been trying to find are sort of examples of other cities that have had similar projects and, and what the results of those projects have been. I'd just like to to make sure that that kind of information is available to people, but um, but that's about it. Just here to to, um, to offer that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Next is John D. Bartolo. We'll unmute you in a moment. Go ahead, John. Yes, De Bartolo. Thank you. Um, I too just wanted to speak briefly with regard to the uh, Main Street redesign. <clears throat> um, in particular with regard to some safety issues that I wanted to raise uh, to everyone's attention. Uh, I know that the four alternatives that were initially presented, uh, only one of them uh, indicated no bike lanes. And that was also indicated in that proposal that it would not likely meet the mass DOT criteria for the federal aid and assistance. So clearly, if the project is moving forward, it's gonna have bike lanes. And I wanted to talk about where those bike lanes are located and what I see as particular concerns with regard to that. Um, the three-lane version in Concord that was offered to substantiate the effectiveness and safety of this, of this design uh, differs from what's been offered here in Northampton in that the bike lanes in Concord uh, are not uh, adjacent to the vehicle lane of travel, but are adjacent to the curb, uh, the, or vice versa. Here, they have them uh, adjacent to the curb, and in New Hampshire, they're adjacent to the lane of travel. So with the bike lane adjacent to the curb behind a row of parked cars, I see a number of potential safety issues. Uh, 
One is that vehicles taking right turns uh, will not see bikes hidden behind the row of cars and it puts the cyclists at risk. Uh, another is that with the lane located in that location, uh, vehicles entering from side streets that have to inch up to see around parked cars will also put cyclists at risk. Uh, another is that it endangers both cyclists and pedestrians as um, people exit from the passenger side of parallel parked vehicles adjacent to that lane. Uh, and lastly, with regard to the location is that it puts pedestrians at risk as they step off the curb into a bike lane where, where bikes are speeding by. Um, I have not done any exhaustive study. I'm not a city planner. I'm a personal injury attorney. And I practiced in this area for 27 years in the Northampton area. And I've represented more than a thousand people who were injured in motor vehicle collisions, pedestrians, bikes. Uh, and I can tell you that the primary reason these things happen is driver inattention and failure to perceive surroundings. So this is anecdotal, but I would say that putting the bike lane in such a place that it is obstructed from the view uh, of motorists is only going to exacerbate the problem of motorist inattention and failure to perceive surroundings. Now, I'm not here today to try to persuade you to do it my way. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it won't be unsafe. But there's only two ways to find out whether I'm wrong. One is a multi-million dollar permanent way, and the other is a trial run. And what I'm here today is to ask you to do a trial run. What time do you want to go to the movies? So I'm, I'm not sure if that was directed at us. So uh, to do a, a trial run, not of what I think is best, but of what you think is best. You know, so take the version that you want to do, put it in place in a trial run, as has been done in other cities, to see if it works. This way, if there are safety problems, if we're finding unanticipated motor vehicle bicycle collisions, we can I just want to say it's two minutes. Okay, I'll wrap up. Thank you, Cindy. I'll wrap up. If any business owner could tell you that if you have something that's a good idea, you just want people to try it. Try the service, try the product. If this is something that'll be good for the community, you try it. People will like it. If they like it, maybe they'll be more patient during a long construction process. But if they don't like it, if there are problems, which I expect other people to speak to, or the safety problems I outlined, maybe they can be tweaked. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next is James Winston. You should have something pop up telling you to unmute. Oh, okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, All we right. can hear you, go ahead. Okay, thanks. James Winston, uh, lifetime uh, Northampton resident. My grandfather had a business at 233 Main Street. My dad had a drugstore Main Street for 40 years. Um, so I come at it from a kind of a long perspective here, um, and it's too bad Carolyn isn't here. But we 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 saw in August of 2020 much, and I, I'm I'm against this proposed Main Street re redesign for a lot of reasons. But one of the biggest issues is the reason why the city's saying they want to do this is is for safety. And we saw in August of 2020, it did not make things safer. It actually made things less safe. It made the parallel parking, cars were opening up their driver's side to oncoming traffic on the left instead of angle parking where you were opening your car door to the car next to you. Uh, we saw cars avoiding Main Street during the height of a pandemic when there was less traffic, but the one lane in each direction backed up traffic immensely, and then cars were darting down Market Street, narrower streets, Gothic, Center Street. And, and it made it less safe. The city was supposed to do a traffic study uh, on, this, on the impact on the neighboring uh, streets. And now they're, not, now they're saying they, they won't do this. We saw another safety concern about traffic vehicles. The, the, the chief of police is here on this call. And often during emergencies, you would see ambulances, trucks, uh, fire trucks, uh, first responders that could not get over, that the cars on the right couldn't get over because there was only one lane in each direction. Safety is very important, but this actually made things worse. What the city should do to make Main Street safer, very simple things that they haven't done. One is there's no signage in the main crosswalks on Main Street, nothing that says, hey, pedestrians have the right of way. Uh, they they could easily paint the traffic lanes so we, that we know um, where where the car should be. They don't do that. We could have raised speed bumps on the crosswalks. Look at Pleasant Street. The city has raised crosswalks that will have cars slow down. 
The city doesn't do that. We could have curb extenders to make the long Main Street uh, less um, less long, like we have on Elm Street by Bedford Terrace. We we have absolutely shortened the crosswalks on those. We don't do that on Main Street. So instead, the idea is we're just going to do this and hope it works. And there was over. 85 business owners, property owners downtown that demanded that the city take this project down earlier than it was supposed to be. It was supposed to go from August 20 to November 2020. The central parts of that uh, project, the narrowing of Main Street to one lane each way, uh, the, the parking, by the way, this is a parking commission. We're going to lose over a hundred and uh, over a third of the parking spaces to this. And I would ask this parking commission under the proposed redesign, where James, we have I just want to give you the two minute warning. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'll try to wrap it up. Um, yeah. If you could finish quickly, we have a lot of folks on. Okay. Our I'll just say so that I need to. If, if, if the city was really going to to narrow Main Street and have unloading instead of the middle of, of Main Street, instead of taking all 18 spots from Michelson Gallery down to CVS, they could do it across the street from First Church Urban Outfitters. That's only nine spaces, but more importantly, only two businesses as opposed to over two dozen businesses. And I'll just say this, that there's so many city officials, some of them on this call that have said to me privately and others off the record, you know, we don't agree with this, but they, they can't say it publicly. A trial run, as John said, is the way to go. If it's as good as the city thinks, then I'll be, we'll be the first to tip our cap. But if it, but if it's not, we won't have committed three years, they, three to five thank years. You. Thank you, James. I, thank I have you. to cut you off. I appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Um, if I could just ask folks, please, we, we do need to limit comments to two minutes. We have a lot of folks on the call. We want to give everybody an opportunity to speak. Okay, next up is Jackie Balance. Yeah, Jackie Balance from Florence. I'm going to speak also to the Main Street redesign. There have been a lot of pros and cons for every concept. Personally, if I had been asked, I might have envisioned a boulevard with a big row of trees down the middle, elegant uh, downtown possibility. Meanwhile. We did have a trial run and it was a failure. So we're still following that plan. That doesn't make sense. Um, I, I did a lot of work in, in scientific research. I worked in research labs at UMass and at Michigan State. And the scientific process is to observe your facts, collect your data, think of ideas and theories, and then test them. The idea of a good trial run makes sense for everybody. A trial run that lasts longer than a few weeks because people never got a chance to get used to it. I want to support the idea of a trial run. I think it's the way to find out the truth. Okay, thank you. Next is Claudia Lefko. Hi, can you hear me? We can, go ahead. Okay, very good. So, um, I mean, I think the reason so many people are here is because um, because I think we haven't felt heard in the planning process. And this is one of the issues that's really, you know, bothered me that there have been very there hasn't been any kind of hearing about this where we could we can have a record of it and see it again played back as far as I'm as I, as I understand. So. People in the city come on for two minutes. I don't see the clock ticking, but it's not enough time to make a comment. And when there is a meeting and we try to make a comment and ask a question, then the answers aren't forthcoming. And I feel like one of the problems with this is that conversation about it has been very restricted. And so I'm here to kind of complain about that. I'm also here to complain about the amount of money we're spending on this. I live in a neighborhood. It's one of the second poorest neighborhoods in the city. We have side walks that are so dangerous in this neighborhood, but there's no money. We're not on a list to fix them. Yet we're going to spend a million dollars to hire tool. Then we're going to spend $21 million. So I'm here to advocate, let's take the steps that were recommended in a previous study. Let's paint some lines, some you know traffic lines on the road down, down street, and let's improve the crosswalks as Jim and other people have been saying. Um, my concern is that I'm a bike rider. 
1980, I got an award from Mayor Musanti for setting an example as an adult who was using alternative transportation, and I got a bike helmet. So I've been riding my bike downtown for years, and I ride on Pleasant Street from my neighborhood. Pleasant Street is going to be backed up by this traffic. That's my fear, but I don't know if that's true because again, nobody is telling me whether what's going to happen to Pleasant Street. It's already backed up. Bumper to bumper traffic and the bike lane is the car lane. So when I pull out as this old lady on my three-speed bike into Sorry, that- Sorry, two minutes. Can you just let me finish? When I pull out into the traffic on my bike, I'm not keeping track with the cars. I'm at great risk. So putting a bike lane on Main Street does nothing to help me, even though I'm heading to Main Street. So I feel like you have to look at the peripheral streets. Thanks. Thank you, Claudia. Next is Mark Warner. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, so I'm a Northampton resident. I'm not a downtown business owner. But I do have a uh, I'm concerned about the downtown Main Street redesign. Let me mention that I'm not particularly opposed to it. I have a lot of faith in the city and in Tool Design Group. But uh, and I generally am willing to go and yield to professionals on these matters. But I am one of the professionals. I have a I've been a, a transportation planning consultant for 30 years, and it's been my business. I have a PhD in the subject. Um, in particular, I'm concerned about the lack of the traffic study. It seems that the city does have an opportunity to go and understand what is going to be the implications of narrowing the lanes on Main Street. And uh, you can do it not just by having to do a $21 million test or to do even a simulation with the uh, barriers in the way. You can use certain tools there that are available to professionals. And my guess is tool design could do this, and if they're not, I suggest the city go and take some of that million dollars and find somebody else who can. These are things like uh, Transmodeler, Synchro, CoreSim. These are area transportation modeling tools and uh, PVPC, Pine Valley Planning Commission, can help you with the data you'd need for that. So uh, I think this is something the city is going to have to do anyway, even after it implements this program, because you're going to want to go and use this system to go and retime the traffic lights. The earlier comments uh, that Claudia Lefko made, for example, about the backup on Pleasant Street is a real concern. Is this lane, is the traffic going to flow smoothly on Main Street? And what are going to be the implications for uh, gridlock and spillback on Pleasant, on King, on Gothic, on Old South, uh, when you uh, reduce the traffic flow that's there? The other thing too is that I, there are tools that can get a clear understanding of what's going to happen with those lost traffic, with those lost parking spots in downtown. Look, the downtown is uh, our civic blood. It is the source of our property tax, our meals tax, and some of our hotel, hotel tax, and, uh, and the quality of life. I don't think you wanna go at this uh, without clearly understanding what the consequences would be. And as you have a buildup of opposition to this, Knowing that can go and allow you to convey that information and give you, the policymakers, greater confidence that you know what the implications are, be, are going to be. I don't get the sense from all the documents I've seen online that tool design has provided you with that. So go ahead and you know go forward uh, if you can, but make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Use these tools. I did send a note about this to Carolyn Mish a while ago. I, I didn't hear back, which is why I'd hope that she was gonna be on the call today. Again, but two minutes. Where the Planning Commission, the Transportation, the Transportation Park Commission is going to have to go and understand what are the long-term implications and you're gonna to have to come up with some sort of plan for rationing the spaces that are left behind. Okay, okay. thank you for your comments, Mark. Okay, is there anyone else for public comment? Please raise your hand if you'd like to speak to something that's not on our agenda. Okay, and thank you to everyone who commented. Um, your comments are part of the record and they are shared um, with city officials. Oh, we have one person. Okay. All right, Kim L has a hand raised. We will unmute you, go ahead, Kim. Hello? Hello, we can hear you, go ahead yeah. if you could. Say your Hi. name. Your yeah, name. don't count that as my two minutes. Um, Kimberly Lambert, Pines Edge Drive, Northampton. Hi, everybody. Um, just ditto on what people have said that um, these committee meetings don't allow for 
any depth of conversation. And uh, we experience that same thing with the planning department. We don't get uh, we don't get to see that the feedback this, that residents give um, really plays out in their future plans after meetings. Um, one thing I want to say about traffic is the planning department has done it, paid for a traffic study at 196 Cook Ave, and they didn't include the increased traffic at the parking lot, 21 spaces. And we have been pleading with the city for 30 years to try and help us with safety improvements on Hatfield Street. Same thing previous people have talked about. Raised sidewalks, raised, raised, excuse me, raised crosswalks, indentations. We need those at the Cook Ave, uh, Hatfield Street intersection and the increase of traffic from the development at 196 Cook Ave is not accounted for in the planning department consultation report that they paid for, the city taxpayers paid for, and now we will have to suffer more. It's, it's like a kick in the pants to the residents here who have been requesting help with that intersection for 30 years. Okay, thank you, Kim. Anyone else who has comments for the commission? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from the prior meeting, which is June 20th, 2023. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So moved, Devin. I'll second it, Jody. Yes. Okay, is there any discussion on the minutes? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Excuse me, Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Devin? Yes. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Nancy? Karen? Abstain. I'm sorry, I wasn't here June 20th. Uh, Jamila? Yes. Uh, five yeses, one abstention. Thank you, Beth. Next is reports from departments and subcommittees. So I just have a couple of updates from DPW. Winter Street, a large utility reconstruction and paving project, um, and final paving of the road, drivewalks and sidewalks is anticipated to begin in a few weeks once everything, once all the work that we have previously done um, a couple months ago sets up. Safe routes to school, Mass DOT has contracted with Gomes Construction Company to complete improvements that will enhance pedestrian safety near Bridge Street School. That project is substantially complete, although you may still see a little bit of contractor activity there. The Damon Road project continues. Gagliarducci Construction will be working on driveways and catch basin frames between Damon Place and the Norwatok Rail Trail. Um, as always, motorists should expect delays. There are delays associated with the railroad doing some work that they need to complete. Um, though this was originally scheduled to be complete by the end of 2023, um, it is likely that this is going to push into next year. Uh, the city also received two sets of school, school zone flashing beacons as part of a Mass DOT grant. We've received them for the Northampton High School. The beacons will be installed near 74 North Elm Street and 333 Elm Street. And for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School, the beacons will be installed by 50 in Locust Street and 80 Locust Street. So we're just working through some final engineering details on that. And uh, we do need to mobilize a contractor for the installation. Um, and that will occur in the upcoming weeks. Does any other member of the commission have an update for us on anything? Yeah, I think that's true. I can't post it. Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to matters before the commission. So first up is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Riverside Drive. So we do, um, as I said, have a lot of folks on the call um, and we have several traffic calming requests to get through. So what I would like to do is talk a little bit about our the concern, our engineering work. Chief Casper will share the speed data that she collected 
And then what I would like to do is open it up to members of the neighborhood who may be here to speak on the topic. Again, we ask that everyone keep their comments within two minutes so that everybody has an opportunity to speak to us. What the commission is looking for is feedback and conversation around what you see as the problems in the neighborhood so that we can make good decisions uh, about how to move forward. So first up is a discussion of traffic calming request for Riverside Drive. So we have received several traffic calming requests from several locations on Riverside Drive. So this is kind of a uh, uh, an ongoing concern from various folks. Um, hopefully some of them are here with us. Um, so concerns are speeding um, and uh, uh, just um, a kind of heavy traffic volumes and, and you know, typical concerns when we have cars who are potentially exceeding the speed limit um, in a residential area. So uh, what I would like to share is um, that we did uh, an engineering analysis on this as we always do and a speed and collision analysis. So I will ask Chief Casper if she will jump in and talk to us about the collision and speed data that her department collected, Chief. Sure, thank you. So this was a little bit of a unique one because it was broken down into segments because we had different complaints about different sections of the roadway. So I did the collision analysis in on June 27th of 22. So it's a five year look back for those of you that may be listening who, who don't sit in these meetings all the time and understand our collision analysis. We collect collision data from five years from the date that I just gave, uh, June 27th, 2022. We first looked at Maine's field. There were zero collisions in the area of Maine's field. We looked at the Ladd Avenue portion. We identified one collision at the intersection of Riverside and Ladd Ave. And then by Federal Street, we identified five collisions in those five years. It's kind of interesting. We had one in 2018 and then four of them in 2019. But when we looked at those a little bit more, four out of the five collisions involved a vehicle that was stopped on Federal Street and then pulled out in front of a vehicle traveling on Riverside Drive. Um, all of us on the commission are familiar with those sorts of accidents where people have stopped and either they don't see a vehicle or um, they thought it was a four-way stop typically and pull out. So then we looked at speed data. I looked at speed data in two separate sections by Maine's field. So we put the device in the area of 579 Riverside Drive from July 21st to August 4th in 2022. During that data collection period, we measured the speeds of 10,697 vehicles. The average speed was 29. The 85th percentile speed was 34.7. This is a posted 30. So this was considered a uh, speeding an area of speeding concern. We then looked at Ladd Avenue and we put it in the area of 294 Riverside Drive. That was there from May 19th to June 2nd, 2023. So that was earlier this year. During that time, the speeds of 17,287 vehicles was recorded. The average speed was 26. The 85th percentile speed was 30.3. And in this section, it is a posted 20. So this is an area with speeding problems as well. That's my overview of collisions and speed for Riverside. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, now what I'd like to do, I see a couple of hands. So what I'd like to do is um, ask for those who are here from the public, um, if they'd like to speak to us about what their experience is. I see Joyce has her hand raised. So go ahead, Joyce. Your computer should be asking you to unmute. There, there it goes. Um, I, I That went so fast that I didn't get all the information and don't know if there was a speed um, report for Federal and Riverside. Um, if there was, I missed it because it was going a little too fast for me. Um, I also had a question about being stopped um, at the Federal and Riverside Junction. There's a mailbox just beyond Federal going towards the high school where people stop, put their mail in the box and then move out onto the street. I still think if there was a four-way stop there that could have been mitigated. Um, 
I live on Warner Street. I use Federal um, to get to Riverside. There are now on my street, Warner, um, five new houses built by John Hansel. That's uh, more people coming down the street and to use um, that intersection. And there are also two new, uh, there's a, a two family that Hansel has built the other side of Riverside. So there's, and there's another one on federal. So there's a lot more traffic um, in the past couple of years. Riverside um, is difficult to make a left turn on. There's shrubbery blocking the way. Also, the traffic calming measure that was put in several years ago was to um, have speed bumps, and which I think are a real boost to drivers coming down of the hill from Biker School toward Riverside. Um, people come down very quickly. I myself, when I come that way, come quickly and there's no need to slow down going down that big hill. I really believe that we need a four-way stop there. Um, there have been accidents, as has been noted, uh, five of them, I didn't realize so many. Um, and I think that, um, that it's very dangerous. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Joyce. Next is Henry. Hey y'all, I'm Henry Morgan. I'm a resident of Ward 5. Alex Jarrett is my uh, city councilor. I live on the Landy Ave, right by Mansfield. Um, I just wanted to say that um, judging by the report that Jody Casper gave, I, I think that the best use of resources is to focus on federal and Riverside just because of the number of collisions. And earlier I sent out an email to uh, Alex and he recommended that I, I share it in public comment that I think that it would be valuable to potentially put in a speed radar and about two um, of the speed bumps, similar to the ones that we saw on, um, I think, Riverside Drive. Uh, no, no, not Riverside Drive. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my map. I'm bad with street names. One second. Uh, the one, the other two up there by um, on the other side of Mainsfield, putting two other uh, speed bumps there, and then a speed radar, I think, would be valuable as well. Um, I think focusing on just trying to build up pedestrian safety and and better for that, just especially because it's so close to the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jarrett, welcome. Thank you, uh, Alex Jarrett, uh, 8 High Street, Florence, Councillor for Ward 5. Wanted to relate uh, two comments from folks who live um, near or on Riverside who can't make it. First is from Celeste Palladino, 29 Landy Avenue. She says, I strongly support traffic calming measures at the intersection of Mainsfield and Riverside Drive, in addition to hopefully exploring the possibility of sidewalks on Landy Ave. I have two middle aged, middle school aged children, and having them cross Landy Ave to Mainsfield feels risky due to the extremely high rate of speed cars frequently travel along the stretch and on Landy as a cut through street. The current situation is very hazard hazardous to pedestrians, children, and pets slash wildlife. And from Christine Shaw and Justin Wentworth at 238 Riverside Drive, uh, we've noticed that drivers seem to speed up after turning the corner by Indigo Coffee Roaster from Nonatuck onto Maple slash Riverside, heading toward Maine's Field. Also in the past several years, there have been deer families living in the woods and frequently crossing Riverside. Uh, and thank you for uh, taking a look at this. I know that I've heard from many constituents all along Riverside Drive uh, about we're working on this, so looking forward to seeing more measures enacted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next is Summer. Hi, thank you so much. I live adjacent to Mainsfield on Riverside Drive, and I think two major points um, have already been addressed. But the activity that happens at Maine's Field in the summer with softball leagues and volleyball leagues contributes to the high rates of speed. And it's, you know, nothing confirmed, but just going over there to walk my dog, there are quite frequently empty beer bottles and beer cans. And so I do have a concern about drinking and driving on Riverside. 
And during the school year, we also have students and younger drivers who are going a high rate of speed on Riverside to get to other parts of Northampton and Florence. Um, other people have noticed or noted as well that we have a lot of wildlife. I personally have two neighborhood bears that cross Riverside quite frequently, in addition to deer and bobcat and foxes. Um, there are many children in our neighborhood, and given the low visibility of the, the topography of Riverside, I would highly recommend and I would love to see some speed humps put into place or any other traffic calming measures. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen Rubin. I live at 291 Riverside at the corner of Liberty Street. And I uh, just wanted to register my strong support of traffic calming measures. Uh, this, I live right in front of the elementary and middle school bus stop uh, for the surrounding blocks. And, uh, you know, there's cars that go through this 20 mile an hour. Uh, we didn't hear about the upper limits of what the traffic study saw in terms of speed, but just anecdotally, I got an app on my smartphone that measured speed up to 60, 70 miles an hour in this 20 mile an hour zone. Um, you can hear the same car engines doing the same thing over and over, and they just think that they can get away with it. Um, so anything from a crosswalk so that the kids can get across safely to more speed bumps would be something I'd be in strong favor of. Um, I, I can't think of any reason why we wouldn't do this because it, while it may cost a little bit of money, this is so, so dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, we'll unmute you, go ahead. Yeah, once again, I uh, live in Bay State Village where Riverside Drive and Nonatuck Street are our main drags that surround the entire neighborhood. Um, I hope that Chief Casper's report will lead to traffic calming in the uh, area around Maine's Field. That's a very important area. And I want to underscore everything everybody else has said about the wildlife. Uh, the collision report does not include dead animals. And you know the, the Mill River is right there. It's part of the, the, the watershed supports a lot of life, including the human life here. And Traffic calming will benefit all, all of us creatures. I also want to underscore what's been said about the intersection of Federal and Riverside. That I've been in Bay State Village off and on since 1970, uh, 77, 78. I lose track of time, but that intersection has always been problematic and deserves to be revisited uh, for a four-way stop or another Oh, speed bump on Riverside to the um, uphill end of Riverside Drive. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak about Riverside Drive? I just have a couple of engineering comments. Um, so we have uh, speed tables, as, as folks know, at 167 and 221 Riverside Drive. Um, one of the things about speed tables, and we have to be careful with their placement, is they can affect drainage. Um, so we do have to be very careful where we place them um, so that water is able to flow off the road and that we don't create um, a, a hazard by um, interfering with our drain system. And the other thing we have to think about is noise for uh, residences that may uh, be near the installation of the speed tables. Um, any sort of heavy truck traffic, um, even cars, but particularly heavy trucks or vehicles with trailers um, will make uh, quite a bit of noise. So there are places where we have installed speed tables and we find them to be very effective. Florence Road comes to mind. Um, that the abutters can often be challenged by that installation because of the noise. So we do need to be mindful when we deploy something like this, um, that, it, that it's absolutely going to be effective. It's a vertical deflection in the roadway and it will slow people down, but we do need to think about what the effects of that might be to those in the area and then to the roadway itself. 
Um, I'll also mention that Councillor Jared and I have spoken a couple of times about the intersection with Ladd Avenue. It's sort of uh, unusual geometry. We have a uh, difficult sidewalk, uh, lack of continuity there for, for lack of a better phrase, um, that's made very challenging just by the topography of the roadway. So when we think about how to improve uh, pedestrian safety, how do we put a crosswalk in here, how do we get people back and forth across the street safely in a way that slows drivers down, it's a very challenging area in that particular place and Councillor Jarrett and I have spoken about that on more than one occasion. Um, so just a few engineering comments, I don't know if anyone from the Commission has any comments for us or any feedback on any of the comments that we've heard from residents. Okay, seeing and hearing none. So the way um, we proceed with something like this, anytime we see a, uh, a, a collision cluster, and we definitely have a collision cluster, as the chief explained, um, it, it, at the intersection with Federal Street, that's concerning to us. Um, and we will focus uh, our energy in that particular area, but as well in the entire corridor. So um, we appreciate everybody's comments. And if there are other comments, you are welcome to contact us at DPW Info. Cindy will type our email address into the chat. Um, and if you have further comments, you are more than welcome to send it to us and we will do what we can to uh, improve safety in the entire corridor. Typically, we do not mobilize for an individual project. We typically uh, bundle these projects together as part of an overall construction project, but sometimes in other parts of the city or nearby where a particular roadway has a problem. So it's not, we would not just for folks Folks on this call who maybe haven't been to one of these meetings before, I just want to kind of set expectations uh, and explain that when we do mobilize a contractor, we go for economy of scale. And so we mobilize for large projects um, kind of all at once rather than, okay, we're just going to hire someone to do this thing in this location. Um, but we will be in touch with the neighborhood and with Councillor Jarrett um, before anything uh, moves forward here. Any other comments for us on Riverside Drive? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we will move on to a discussion of traffic calming requests for Bridge Road by Shallow Brook Lane. Um, so this traffic calming request uh, came to us primarily related to turning safety um, into the, uh, the community, the living community off Bridge Road. And I will let Chief Casper speak to speed and collision data here. Thank you. I will uh, present this slowly. I know it's a lot of data to take in. So um, this one, the collision review, the five-year collision review was on July 25th of 2022. <clears throat> and we had to narrow down the stretch on Bridge Road. And we did that by looking at collisions between Hatfield Street and North Elm. So in those five years, we had 29 collisions. It's notable that 17 of those occurred at the intersection of Hatfield and Bridge. And seven occurred at the intersection of Bridge and North Elm. So in the five year period, there were five collisions along the stretch of roadway between the two intersection. One was caused by a deer, one was caused by a driver passing a turning vehicle, and one was caused by a driver error regarding proper operation around an ambulance. There was one collision that occurred at the Shallowbrook intersection and it involved a vehicle that had stopped for the crosswalk and then it was rear-ended by a driver who had not been paying attention. They had they said that they were blinded by solar glare uh, and that collision occurred at 7.23 in the morning in July. So that is an overview of the collisions in that area. The speed data was collected on October 4th, 2022. So we put out our collection device and we put it in the area of Bridge Road and Shallowbrook Drive. It was there from September 14th to the 22nd in 2022. 
During that time, this is a busy street. It had a high traffic volume of 112,817 vehicles that were counted and their speeds were analyzed. The speed limit is a 35. The average speed was 27, but the 85th percentile speed was 40.9. So the 85th percentile speed was more than five miles over the posted limit. And we consider this uh, an area where speeding is a concern in the area of Shallowbrook Drive. That's everything that I have. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Chief. I'll also note that the CEO of the uh, Lathrop community at Northampton did send us kind of making a request for us to, to look at this intersection um, and also evaluate the benefits of pedestrian operated flashing lights and other specific measures for the safety of, and this is uh, his words, our residents and other pedestrians or her words, uh, pardon me, um, and other pedestrians wishing to cross Bridge Road. Um, so, and, and this was signed by uh, several residents of, of the Lathrop community. So uh, just a couple of engineering notes. Um, you know, Bridge Road is a main arterial roadway within the city and uh, carries a considerable amount of traffic as the chief noted in her report. Um, we did do some repaving here in 2019. And at that time, we installed three scored concrete islands at the Gables condominiums at Shallow Brook Lane and at Hatfield Street. Um, we also installed rectangular rapid flashing be beacons in 2015 by the middle school and again by Mountain Street in 2020. Um, so I will open this up to anyone from the public who wishes to speak to us. I see one hand, Chris, go ahead, Chris, we'll unmute you. Good afternoon, everybody, thanks. Um, Chris Haig, Facilities Manager for Lathrop Community. And I think the biggest concern for our residents is the fact that, um, as we all know, it's distracted driving. Um, they put flags up on that crosswalk and we appreciate the city maintaining the crosswalk as well as they can. A lot of times after this, the plow season, of course, all the paint stripped off on the both sides and the middle of the crosswalks visible. But I think the biggest concern is, is maybe if there's a possibility for some speed enforcement through there on occasions, and then um, crosswalk signs that actually light up um, at some point, if it can be in the resource pile of the city of Northampton or the state would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Okay, Kim, I see your hand up. We'll unmute you. It should be asking you to unmute yourself. You I did. Okay, can you, okay. could you, thank you. Could you repeat what you said about Hatfield Street? I, I, I'm sorry, are you, are you asking for the chief to repeat her data on collisions at the intersection um, of Hatfield Street and Bridge Road? Yeah, you just mentioned some things that you put along Hatfield Street. Oh, you're asking me. Okay, yeah. yes. So uh, when we repaved in 2019, um, we had our contractor install three scored concrete islands. Um, one of them is at the Gables condominiums, one is at Shallow Brook, and one is at Hatfield Street. One is at the intersection of Hatfield and Bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from any members of the public? Okay, any comments from members of the commission on this area? Comments or questions? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to a discussion of traffic calming requests. There's for... someone raising their hand, Don. I don't know if you want to, it just came up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Okay, so Edward Shanahan, I'm not sure if you're here to speak about uh, Bridge Road, but we will unmute you and find out. Is that what I do? Yep, go ahead. We can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, yeah. I speak uh, primarily as a as a uh, pedestrian uh, at Lathrop, uh, who frequently and very often uh, tries to cross that street to go over to the cemetery for a leisurely walk around. 
uh, and it is a peril each time to get from one side to the other. Uh, uh, you can outweigh, uh, you can outweigh until the, until the traffic ceases in both, both, from both, to sit, both ends, uh, but that takes a while. And I think that pedestrians have some right away there because it's said that pedestrians have the right away. I think the, uh, the, uh, the, you need to have much more of a, such as they have up the, up the street tour, there's a device uh, uh, just west of there for traffic calming uh, that I think would be useful. Uh, the other thing is the chief didn't mention anything about any tickets that have been issued. The, seems to me that if there was a problem with speeding and the records seem to show that, that there might be some evidence that some uh, action was taken to somehow discourage that by passing out tickets to people who violate the speed limit. Um, I don't know whether they actually issue tickets anymore for speeding. It seems to me that that the speeds, the speeds on all of the roads are, are exceedingly uh, uh, got, got out of out of out of whack. Uh, people now adopt a speed similar to what they use on ninety one uh, uh, on Bridge Road, uh, and, I, and I don't, I don't, I think uh, some some more definitive. Uh, it, it, uh, effort should be made to slow people down by stopping them and giving, making them go to court. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. We, uh, we have to um, uh, move through um, our agenda here. So that's, that's two minutes. So thank you for your comments. Okay, any other comments for us on this bridge road area? Okay, hearing, hearing none, we're gonna move on to discussion of the traffic calming request for Audubon Road. Uh, so I'll turn this over to the chief to talk to us about collision and speed data. Hold on one second, I just had it and I lost it. There we go, Audubon Road. Okay, um, this one, the collision data was gathered on July 20th, 2022. So we did a five year, I'm sorry, that's the request. Seven, it was 726, six days later, July 26, 2022. A five year collision analysis was conducted. During that time, three collisions occurred, one in 2017 and two in 2021. Um, the one in 2017 was a collision from a speeding driver who became distracted and then veered off the road into a utility pole. And one of the collisions in 21 involved a single vehicle that veered off the roadway into a tree and boulder. And the third was a driver who experienced a medical emergency and veered off the roadway. Um, not surprisingly, on a road like Audubon, where these were single vehicle accidents, where vehicles left the roadway and struck a tree or a pole. Uh, then we looked at the speed data that was reviewed on October 4th, 2022. And I should say just partially in response to what, what Edward was saying in the last comments so that everyone knows, whenever we identify a speed problem in an area, we add it to our directed patrol list each month. And then when we have officers who are available, they're assigned to that area and then they go out and issue citations and warnings to try to slow drivers down. So that is the outcome when I don't include ticket and citation data on these, but whenever we find that there's a speeding problem, that is what we do. We add them to our directed enforcement list. Um, in this street on Audubon, Audubon, we did a covert speed data collection in the area of 346 Audubon Road from September 14th to the 30th in 2022. During that time, we measured the speeds of 9,817 vehicles. The speed limit is 30, the average speed was 29, and the 85th percentile speed was measured at 34.1. That's all the info that I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. 
Um, it, so just from an engineering perspective, Audubon Road is over 7,000 feet long. Um, but interestingly, it is actually very narrow. It's, it's only between 22 and 23 feet wide. So as part of our assessment, one of the things we need to think about is, you know, how do we get traffic to a place where we can slow it working within this very, very narrow footprint. Um, so folks know a typical travel lane can be between 10 and 12 feet wide. Um, so mathematically, if you sort of back into that 22 to 23 feet wide, um, we realize that we're dealing with a very, very narrow footprint. Um, is there anyone here from Audubon Road who wishes to speak to us uh, about what their experience is? I don't see any hands. Uh, any members of the commission have any comments, uh, suggestions, or questions uh, about Audubon Road or any of the data that we've talked about? Okay. Seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to a discussion of a traffic calming request for Prospect Street at Crescent Street. Uh, Chief, go ahead with your data. Sure, we reviewed the collision data on August 3rd, 2022. We looked back five years for the intersection of Crescent Summer Prospect. So we found zero in 2018, one in 2019, one in 2020, two in 21, and one in 22. For some reason I didn't add those on my analysis, so that makes it five, <laughs> five total in the five years. Only one of the collisions resulted in personal injury. Two collisions involved a driver on Crescent Street that failed to stop for the stop sign and then collided with a car that was on Summer Street. Two of the other collisions were single vehicle crashes where the vehicle left the roadway and collided with a fixed object. In both crashes, the drivers were charged with impaired operations. So these were drivers who were impaired by either drugs or alcohol. Then the speed data we looked at in October, of 22, we put it in the area of 200 Prospect Street from October 8th through the 18th. During that time, the speeds of 73,162 vehicles were collected. The average speed was 34. The 85th percentile speed was 37.8. This is a 35 mile per hour zone. And so the 85th was yeah, 37.8. So that's an overview of my data. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, the the pros Prospect Street, I sometimes refer to Prospect Street as a corridor. Um, it is uh, a, like Audubon Road, um, over 7,000 feet long. But unlike Audubon Road, um, it, the pavement there ranges between 25 to 40 feet wide. So that does give us a little more flexibility um, in what we could deploy here to, to tighten things up and, and make the roadway a little bit safer for everybody. Um, so is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to us about this area? I don't see any hands. Um, any comments or questions from members of the commission for us on this? Okay, Councillor Gore, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I have a friend who lives on Crescent and I walk that direction a lot on Crescent and Prospect. And I didn't notice a lot about the speed. So the speed data sounds about accurate, but the um, the stop sign, I noticed that a lot of people don't stop at the stop sign. I don't know if there's a, I can't remember if there's a stop sign on Crescent and a stop sign on Prospect, or if it's just one going in, in one of the directions. But I noticed that when people are going, um, I think from summer to Crescent, like in that intersection, they don't stop a lot. So we've got th we've got three streets intersecting. We've got Crescent Street from the west, Summer Street from the east, and Prospect Street from the north and south. So there's a two-way stop on the north and south approaches of Prospect Street, and the east and west approaches are free flow. Um, anytime we have an intersection like this where you don't have a four-way stop, where you just have 
kind of stopping in two directions. You know, sometimes we can see that people get confused by that and we try to post that by saying, you know, two way stop or cross traffic does not stop. Or we just try to help drivers to understand, you know, what the cars around them are doing um, to avoid incident. So that's something that we'll look at in, in a situation like this. And we appreciate your comment because we never want someone to come to an intersection and be confused about like, are these people stopping? Are these people going? What, what's happening here? Um, so good comment. And that's something that we'll look at. Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, just to echo that, um, it's like it was about a year ago that we looked at um, Crescent Street and Round Hill Road and considered that the cross traffic does not stop adding that on. And, um, you know, it, it makes sense to me that this would be another one that's confusing for drivers, I think, because it's kind of a, a lower speed street. People would, ex I could see why people would think that the um, cross traffic would stop. So um, just wanted to, to add that comment in. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. I appreciate that. Any other comments from anyone on this area? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to a discussion of traffic calming requests for the Village Hill neighborhood. So we received multiple requests um, for the Village Hill area and they came to us last summer. So the chief has some uh, collision and speed data for us uh, in this area. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you. In the five-year look back, which we conducted on August 12th of 2022, there were no collisions on Village Hill in those five years. We looked at speed data in November. So we put the uh, measuring device up from October 20th to November 5th in 2022. During the collection period, we measured the speeds of about 9,500 cars. The average speed was 21 and the 85th percentile speed was 25.4. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Um, I'll also add that we did a very extensive stop sign analysis in this area that uh, Councillor Foster uh, worked with us on. Um, so we thank her for her advocacy efforts for, for the neighborhood and for her engagement in that process. Um, so we did a very extensive and exhaustive study of multiple intersections in this area. And as a result, there were uh, several ordinance changes that went through city council. Um, and some stop signs that were uh, added uh, just to kind of clean and tighten up intersections. Um, this is a kind of a tricky area in that it's a closed uh, circuit, um, meaning that it's it's not a cut through um, and, and it's really um, kind of a, a closed loop with uh, residents and visitors. Um, so is there anyone here uh, from the area who would like to uh, speak on this? Any residents of Village Hill? Okay, I see, uh, it looks like Marilyn um, will ask you to unmute. Hi, it's Marlon. Okay. Uh, Marlon Javeli, and I live on Village Hill Road. So my comment had to do with Village Hill Road is basically from Ford Crossing down, all the way down to Route 66. It's like a speedway because you're at the top of the hill and you just, you know, gravity makes you go faster and you're looking at the light at the bottom of the hill. Um, it also, there are no, as far as I know, there aren't any posted speed signs. Like what is the, it, you know, is it 25? Is it 20? Because we are a closed unit and it's very neighborhoody. Um, there's just, and a lot of people are walking around. There's elderly, there's kids, there's everything. Um, I was heartened to hear that the um, the trial of you know what the speed uh, speeds were actually, um, but the thing is, it's also I believe from that time we now have the um, co housing fully. Everybody's in there, and we have a new 
uh, apartment complex, North Commons. And also we have the people on Higgins Way who are, uh, that's the newest large community and not, I, I don't think their roads are Northampton roads that, you know, their area, it's private, but they all feed into um, either going down Village Hill Road, or I know a lot of people wrote in about the Olander, what goes on on Olander Drive. So I was trying to think what, I, I don't believe that, you know, speed bumps will likely be employed. But one thing I noticed, um, the pedestrian crosswalk in front of the library on West Street, now they have between crossing over from green to the library, they, like right in the middle of it is like a little, I don't know what you call it, but it just, it catches your eye and you slow down. So it gets people to slow down. And I think maybe something like that might work in the crosswalks. Um, we've put up our own signs asking people to slow down. So maybe I, hopefully that's been working, but I think a posted speed and something to just uh, make a difference. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Next is Nicholas. Hi, I'm Nick Warren. I live on Olander Drive um, and would echo Marlin's um, talk. I just have a very small thing to add to this. I think that what you have in document form pretty much covers the problems we're having on um, Olander Drive. The main thing I would add is because people speed through the stop signs, there's a three-way stop sign there where Moser um, comes into Olander. Because people speed, or as they're speeding through it, it's pretty clear view. So somebody coming down Olander can look up Moser and see whether or not a car is coming and decide, well, I'm just gonna blow through the, through the uh, sign. The problem with that is that I think people are then thinking about and looking for cars, not people or people with walkers or dogs or kids or whatever. So I suspect, I don't know, that they're distracted or that they're focusing on the main worry for them, which would be other cars, not these other, other things. I'm encouraged by Chief Casper's speed data because if the 86th percentile was roughly 27 or whatever it was, that's pretty good. It only suggests that there's a small number of people who are going through, seem to go through at a much greater rate of speed and do skip the stop sign. As far as suggestions for what to do about that, it's kind of scary the way people come down rapidly. Um, my original thought, our original thought was speed bumps. Um, but I, I hear Ms. Lascalia's uh, express concerns that people have about noise, about possible drainage problems, uh, maybe snow plows, I'm not sure. So I'm loath to actually suggest a solution, but I'm not sure, but, but I think that some way to slow people down and to get them to obey the stop sign would do the trick. And that simply, that may be more more police surveillance, although I doubt that there's that amount of money available for that. Um, but it would be up to you guys to decide what's the best way to slow people down. It's simply that they need to be slowed down for safety. Just Thank you. Two minutes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Any additional comments from anyone in the public? Um, so just to respond to Marlon's um, comment, uh, we call those uh, pedestrian markers. They go into the center of a crosswalk and we deploy those at some of the um, busier intersections within the city. 
Um, they, they definitely um, are, are very effective in, in catching motorist eyes. Um, they are seasonal. We do have to remove them when we start our snow and ice operations. Um, so it's not something that I can move out year round, um, but we do deploy those in, in very targeted areas uh, around the city to just kind of uh, create an awareness, you know, just catch driver's eyes in a way that um, maybe they wouldn't uh, normally see. Um, so that is something we can certainly look at in the area of there's particular locations that, that these might make sense. We find them to be a very effective tool. Any other comments for us on the area? Any other comments from members of the commission? Okay, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, just to, to add, um, first, thanks. There, there's been, you know, I appreciate a couple of years ago, there was quite a bit of work done looking at the stop signs and included um, quite a bit of, of um, you know, look at traffic flow there. Um, you know, the, the neighborhood did get together and put um, signs up, um, you know, an, an artist living in Village Hill designed those um, please slow down signs around. And, um, you know, I think the only bit of information to add, I, I had reached out to the neighborhood and invited people um, to add comments in, um, in to this discussion. And a couple of folks are here. I didn't get um, other specific emailed comments regarding the traffic comment re uh, coming requests. But the one thing just to, to note is, I think something that makes Village Hill unique in some of this discussion is how the neighborhood's been growing. Um, and so, you know, residents have moved in and then over the years, more and more and more people are moving in. And I think that that can have an impact um, on driving and perception um, and speed. So it's just the other, only other note um, to, to put in there. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, and definitely when we look at this number, you know, when we look at the number, there there is some volume of cars moving through here, um, you know, more than a thousand a day. So we appreciate your comments. Any other comments for us on this request? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to discussion of a parking request for Main Street in Florence. Um, so this was submitted to us uh, last September. Um, and what I'll ask Maggie to do is, Maggie, if you've got like a, a street view on this or some sort of map that shows the area in question that I, I think would be uh, very helpful for us. Um, but this uh, concern is for the area uh, outside of Cooper's um, and it's about sight lines moving on to Route 9. So, you know, there's cars starting and stopping at the traffic light at the intersection of Route 9 and Chestnut Street. And so for folks who are trying to make any sort of movement um, in and out of the area around Cooper's store, and it's obviously um, a very busy area, um, I, I think that uh, sight lines can be uh, difficult. So what we have looked at uh, at various times is restricting parking in, in various locations kind of adjacent to driveways um, and, and just sort of opening up the area so that people can see. So I think that Maggie has sort of zoomed in on the area in question here. Um, and I'm gonna just let her move the cursor. So it would be um, it would be the parking immediately adjacent um, to this driveway where the white pickup is. Um, so that's the area. So if you're trying to make a turning movement out of this driveway, that parking space is uh, very close to the driveway. So I'm wondering if there's anybody here um, from the public who wishes to speak to us. I do see a representative from Cooper's here and I'm not sure if you're here to speak or um, if you're here to listen, but um, I do see Jackie's hand up. So I will unmute you, Jackie, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, Jackie Balance from Florence. I shop at Cooper's a lot. And when I go into that little parking lot there, I know when I leave, I'm going to make a right-hand turn because a left-hand turn is just too dangerous. Having a better line of sight might make it feel safer. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Anyone else have any comments for us? Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Oh, 
Hello, Alex Tarrett, a city councilor for Ward 5. Uh, I'm not sure if Mike Natale is having trouble uh, unmuting. You may want to ask. He did send me um, an email, and so I can relay his comments if he's not able to. Uh, uh, I see his I see his hand up, Councillor. So it okay, looks like great. he's here, and we can recognize him. Did, would you like me to move to him? Yes, please. Okay. All right, Mike. We're gonna unmute you. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, my video is not working. Um, so I'm the owner of State Street in Cooper's Corner and I just wanted to first off express that um, the safety of our customers and the pedestrians in Northampton, the folks in the in town is very important to us. On, um, we wanna make sure people feel safe pulling out of our, our driveway. Uh, one thing I wanted to note was that space um, I think alleviating, removing that space wouldn't alleviate the problem. There's always going to be issues pulling onto Route 9 from any driveway in the center of town, um, especially at the corner of Chestnut and Main. Uh, it always presents a problem. Um, but it, it's I, I kind of contributed to user error in a bit. Um, we can't control who parks in the street. Um, I can always ask that trucks and our delivery vehicles do not park there. Um, my main concern is I feel like the removal of this space would be detrimental to the business, which would then in turn be um, a downside to the town um, for local businesses and what's already a limited space for parking. Um, I know our parking lot is small. Um, I appreciate everybody's efforts to come in and out of it safely. Um, one thought that I had was the potential to make that last space closest to the driveway a 15 minute parking space in a just like the one next to the hydrant is, that could help to alleviate some of the problem. Um, in notes to parking uh, trucks in that space, I feel like if that first space was removed and it's the parking space is in the second spot, um, it's still gonna be a visual issue. Um, we can't remove all the spaces in front of the store, I know that. Um, but I do appreciate the help and the assistance in this and I just wanted to put that word out there. Okay, thank you, Mike. Yeah, there, so there's six spaces in front of the business. The two of them are 15 minute spaces and four are two hour spaces just uh, for a little bit of lay of the land here. Councilor, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering, so part of the issue has to do with whether vehicles on Route 9 are moving too fast for someone who's you know pulling out, inching out, looking, and then uh, if someone's coming too fast, that could, you know, cause something where they're not able to react. I wonder if we have any other, any tools to think about uh, how to keep keep people going slow after they leave that, that signalized intersection at Chestnut, um, whether that's surface treatments or, um, you know, size of, of lanes, any, anything to sort of indicate that, you know, you're still in a very uh, lower speed environment, which generally, you know, we wanna make sure people continue to feel that all the way through Florence Center. And it's not until they leave Florence Center that they um, can can go faster. So I was just curious if we have any uh, tools or any ideas on on ways to to encourage that. Thank you. Thank you for the comment, Councillor. Um, I, I mean, it's a, a very congested corridor. There's no question. Um, I can confer with the chief about if we may be able to measure speed data in this particular location and just see kind of how fast people are moving here. Um, but even moving slowly, um, it's still a very congested area to, to the point of, of a couple of folks who, who have spoken. Um, you know, one of the things um, that, that we can think about and, and Mike even said is, is kind of a no truck parking um zone but it, that's a little bit unusual um and, and then we would have to entertain is that something that we want to create um kind of in front of the store as a whole or you know in the street in front of the store as a whole um or would it just be for this space because obviously you have a big vehicle here and, and you're going to block more than a smaller car would so that would be kind of you know, akin to being in like a, a parking lot and you see, you know, compact cars only of, of parking signs. Um, so that would be kind of a special treatment that we could consider in this area, um, you know, or taking the space away entirely. But, uh, but of course, we've heard Mike's comments on that. So that is the 
um, place we find ourselves in where I, I think we need to do a, a little more um, investigation about how quickly people are moving through here and, and, and what we can do. Uh, any other comments from anyone on the commission on this? And I see Jackie's hand up again. Nancy, go ahead. I just want to make sure to put out there that just taking away the parking space um, without doing something in addition to prevent cars from parking there, because our experience with parking enforcement is, is if a car can fit, it's going to park. I'm with people saying, I was just going to run in. So um, just taking out a space that's still big enough to have a car pull into is not going to uh, solve the problem. Thank you, and that is true. Any other comments from commissioners or suggestions from commissioners on this? All right, Jackie, I see your hand up, go ahead. Thank you. I was very excited by the owner's suggestion of making that um, a no trucks, that one parking place could be posted no trucks and add the 15 minute thing in that would promote business because a lot of people want to run in and out of Cooper's. I just need some sour cream, you know, whatever. Um, and just posting that wouldn't take, as an experiment, wouldn't be so, so hard, would it? Could you just post that one spot? 15 minutes, no trucks. Just a sign. Yeah. Thank you. Try Jackie. it. It might work. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Devin, go ahead. Devin, you got to unmute yourself, I think. You should be able to. It should be giving you a pop up. Yeah, when Maggie's screen shows, I lose my controls at the bottom. I was just going to comment that it seems a bit ironic because I think that's a Kiter truck in that spot, and that is a business owner in that same building. So um, it, that is that is your your local business coming and going through that spot also. So I, I see some problems with making that a no truck zone. Thank you, Devin. Councilor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, it just thinking about Council Jarrett's suggestion and hearing from the business owner, it is, you know, Cooper's, I think, is somewhat unique in that it's such a narrow driveway entry and exit. Um, obviously, speed on Route 9 there plays a role. Um, but I wonder if it would make sense to look at that slightly more comprehensively than this one parking spot, because there are other, you know, sort of business entrances and exits right there. Um, you know, if thinking about like if a right turn only sign makes sense there or removing that one parking spot but is that the only place like i i i'm gonna guess that that is a is a um challenge that comes up more than that one spot and the the issue that drove this parking request um was a singular incident or was driven by one incident um but i think we as a commission would would do well to look at that um that whole stretch yeah, you're correct. I mean, this really is a corridor issue. There's no question about it. Um, and Councillor Jarrett's point is well taken um, that, it, you know, there's congestion, there's speeds, there's uh, turning movements. Um, and, and this could certainly trigger a, a larger look at the area. I mean, this isn't the only, and I believe uh, someone else on the call said, you know, this isn't the only place in Florence where it's difficult to make turning movements onto Route 9. And that is absolutely true. Um, to Jackie's point, um, often before we make uh, any sort of, uh, before we move an ordinance forward, um, we will do a trial run, you know, we'll post temporary no parking. Um, we don't have an ability to enforce a 15 minute limit. We don't have an ability to enforce, you know, no trucks here. Um, we can enforce a temporary no parking order, um, but, but we cannot enforce uh, uh, other measures. Um, so trial runs are definitely a great idea for parking issues um, and, and we do it uh, with frequency. 
Um, so we could entertain something like that here um, and hope to appeal to people's good graces, like please don't park your truck here, we're doing an experiment, you know. Um, but, but again, that's not something that's enforceable. Any other comments from commissioners on this? All right, Jackie, go ahead one more time. Thank you, one more time and I will shut up. Um, I think Kiter is a, a local business, I respect them. I think they could have a couple of reserved places on the Chestnut Street side that would work. This is a small close-knit community, Florence is compared with Northampton. And people generally respect that 15 minute limit on the other end of this strip. And I think they would respect it here, especially when it's perfectly placed for people who want to run in and out, just like the other ones close to the liquor store. Um, I think these little glitches aren't as important as the fact, as you say, it's Route 9 and it's near um, a stoplight and yeah, it's cramped. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Claudia, we'll unmute you. Go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, sorry, I have to run. And so I just want to make a comment. Um, I appreciate the 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 uh the feeling about the meeting, that you're responding to people, that there's so many people in the public who come to comment and you're reacting to them. And I'm just curious if the committee, the transportation and parking, is going to respond to the com comments eventually or put us on the agenda about the concerns about Main Street. Um, because I feel I think part of the frustration is that there hasn't been a capacity or an opportunity in, in terms of what, how I feel to really do this kind of give and take where we hear from from people who are promoting the project and you hear for people who have troubles. So I'm just hope, wondering if we'll be on the agenda at some point or whether it will go forward. So I really appreciate it. And then just to say, you know, there's been this big discussion about eliminating parking on Main Street and that people don't need to park in front of the store. But yet here we have Cooper's, we have State Street in Northampton. Their motto is easy in, easy out. People actually do want to park in front of the store or right near to it. So thanks. And thank you you very much for the way the meeting is run. I'm very happy with it. I'm very grateful for this. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Claudia. And it, I do need to sort of stick with the agenda. But what I will say is that I will send you an email offline. Um, and I will um, respond to your question. So you can expect that from me within a couple of days. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on this agenda item? Okay, seeing and hearing none, is there any new business? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Yes. Jody. Yes. Devin. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamila. Yes. Unanimous at six. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month.